Well, hello. Today I'd like to welcome you to my review of the Prima 61. Uh, this is a Hungarian fountain pen, but uh, what's interesting is it has a Pelican Oblique Medium nib. So, uh, somebody from Hungary has gone for a little trip. So, let's take a look at the pen. If videos like this interest you, uh, where I talk about fountain pens both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And hey, this is a Franken pen. This is a pen made up of parts from different manufacturers. Do you have a favorite Franken pen that you've made or that you've purchased? Let's talk about it down in the comments. So let's take a look at the pen. So the Prima 61 is rather attractive. Uh, a little bit of staining in the barrel I couldn't get out. I, I've had suggestions to use a denture cleaner to do it, but uh, so far I have not. Uh, but, you know, it's a sort of a demonstrator. It's a kind of an orange demonstrator, I guess. Uh, the parts almost seem like they come from different pens. They're not, you know, super proportioned to each other. Like the this piece, the piston turning knob, the barrel, and the cap just don't seem to flow together well. But, whatever, it's the writing that matters. On the barrel, come on, autofocus, Prima 61, 109, and then what looks like an S2, or an SZ, who knows. Nothing really on the cap. The piston turning knob is no great shakes, but I will note that it has, I, I can't show it to you because it's full of ink, but it has a brass mechanism in there to operate the piston, so that's interesting. It's, you know, the grip section isn't anything particularly great. The feed looks like somebody maybe let it get chewed a little. And then, on this Hungarian Cold War era pen... We have a Pelican Oblique Medium Nib. I'm not 100% sure what pen that would have come from, but I just find it interesting that there is this, you know, what would have been then West German nib on a Hungarian pen. Go figure. So this is a Prima 61, like I said, an oblique medium Pelican nib, which I believe is probably gold, just going by the age and the look of the nib. I don't know, but I think it is. Uh, the ink in it is Rohrer and Klingner. Oops, got to start a new line, apparently. Alt Bordeaux. which is an ink I'm trying out as a candidate for a possible replacement of Monte Grappa Bordeaux, which is an ink I like but has been discontinued. Uh, the nib, or oh, sorry, I lost my place there. So as far as flex, you know, I'd say there's a bit. I, I wouldn't call this a flex nib by any means. More bounce than is typical. So there you can kind of see the uh, oblique thing coming through. Uh, wetness and flow. This is a reasonably wet nib and feed. I'm reasonably pleased with that, I think. Smear test. Well, I think from that you know how it's going to go. Yep, yeah, that's a wet one. And reverse writing. Which I don't believe I've tried before on this pen. Oh my god. Yeah, I won't be doing that ever again. And let's go for a longer form writing sample.
But before I do the world famous Pierre Gustafson test, I just wanted to point out something I didn't. When we're talking an oblique nib, if you look at the lines on the page and pretend they're horizontal, what that means is that the nib is ground at sort of an angle, and that's why I'm holding the pen somewhat rotated. The oblique nibs are designed for people who hold their pens rotated. All right, and the world famous Pierre Gustafson test. I think it passed that one with flying colors. Now that rapid writing, or at least as rapid as I'm going to get. Although I don't necessarily want to be competing with lots of people to buy these exotic pens, I will say if you're willing to go beyond the typical Parker, Wall Eversharp, Schaefer, uh, you know, those well-known brands, uh, and I, I just realized I think I listed all American brands there, and I apologize for that, so we'll throw Pelican in there too. Um, but if, if you're willing to go beyond them and go for some of these lesser-known brands, you can get some real treasures. And if you can look beyond uh, sometimes surface appearance, you can get some very good pens, such as this. Uh, I, I found that Central Europe had some very good pen makers. Uh, I really like pen, um, Pencala, which also went by Toes and Rex Pen, and apparently Barclay and a few other names. Uh, I've really enjoyed Centro Pen. I um, have found some from the Central Europe that aren't so wonderful, especially from behind the Iron Curtain. But uh, on the whole, it's, it's interesting, and you can often find them at very low cost. I mean, think Pilot Metropolitan price. Um, and you get a gold nib and just an amazing pen. Now, some You can also spend quite a lot more than that if you want to also. This was more at the, the uh, Pilot Metropolitan end of price. So uh, you know, it's, it's worth looking and looking beyond surface appearance and maybe being willing to do a little cleanup or repair and you can get an amazing pen that is almost on par with uh, some of the big or even surpasses i i would put some of my uh, especially the pen collas above anything i've gotten from uh, western europe or the u.s i and in fairness some of them share the same nibs with certain german manufacturers which is another story for another video but anyway if you're willing to look and perhaps gamble a little bit, you can get some really stunning pens. And the fact that this is a Franken pen, now that gives me a whole history and I'm thinking, okay, why is this West German, because that's what it would have been at that time, nib on a Hungarian pen? I'll never know. Uh, what, did somebody travel to Western Europe and they didn't want the ostentatious pen, but they wanted the nice writing experience. So, you know, who's going to look at their nib? So they snuck it on there. And who knows, maybe the... Hungarian secret police dragged them out of their house one night, you know, because there was such a thing. Um, trying to remember the name of the book. It was, a, it was about a bridge. Anyway, a whole bunch of defectors from Hungary came over until the Soviets cracked down on them because Hungary was trying to be a little more independent and the Soviets are like, oh no, we're not going to have that. Um, I'll put the name of the book down in the video description because it's not come to me right now and I just thought of it as I'm saying this, so I didn't plan that one ahead. <laughs> But anyway, uh, yeah, be willing to branch out, try new things. There are some amazing pens from behind the Iron Curtain. And they're usually a lot lower cost than the bigger names from the other side of the Iron Curtain. So, if videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And hey, do you have a favorite Franken pen? That's what this one is. Let us know down in the comments. Or maybe you have some good experience with a, another pen maker from behind the Iron Curtain. Let us know about that as well. So, I want to thank you for watching. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.